Welcome to Engagement Fundraising, where you'll learn how busy fundraisers like you are generating more major and planned gifts at lower costs. Brought to you by iMarketSmart.com, the software and services company that helps nonprofits raise more money more efficiently. Turn that frown upside down. You're not pouncing. You're a facilitator of feel-good emotions. So you have to change your attitude. We talked about that in the last podcast. If your attitude is wrong, sure, they're going to feel that you're pouncing. Hi, I, I'm calling because I just noticed that you clicked on that video. So I'm wondering, um, do you want to meet with me? That's, that's pouncing. Hi there. Welcome to Engage in Fundraising. I'm Tim Chen, Marketing Solutionist at MarketSmart. On today's Out of Engagement Fundraising, I sit down with Greg Warner to continue our discussion on phone calls. The big topic this episode is why fundraisers are afraid to call major donors. Make sure to check out the last episode from last season for the first part of this discussion. Not sure what engagement fundraising is? Well, you will soon. Happy 2018. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm tired already. Yeah, the new year. Yeah. I can't believe it's it. Exhausting. We got shot out of a cannon. Everybody wants to buy from Market Smart all of a sudden. It's amazing. What is that? I think people uh, must have put us in their budget. Yeah. Thank it's you. It's wonderful. It is. We're just, this is going to, I got to hire more people. We need to reorganize the space, get more. Yeah. I know. I saw they're doing that. I don't know what's yeah. happening. Apparently, every you, are you part of that? Uh, not really, no. Oh, you're not a part <laughs> of it I've only ever heard. I just see talking. all these people like with overalls and stuff, but I, I heard they're going to turn it more into like a we work. But anyway, we just need more space for more people. So we got to like squeeze 10 pounds of <laughs> to a five pound bag. That's what we're going to do. Yeah. But we're not 10 pounds <laughs> of shit. No. We're, we're, we're all, we are like all water. We're 80% mostly water. water. So mostly <laughs> fantastic people. Yeah. 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 That was really cruel. <laughs> we're, we're good people here. Hopefully our staff don't <laughs> listen to the podcast. <laughs> I think uh, some of them do. They know I love they, them. They, they know I love yeah. them. Yeah. All right. So that's cool. Look, do I get to stay in this office? I don't know. All right. So <laughs> hold on. We promised that we were going to talk about calling. Yeah. That's where we left last season. Yes. And the 2017. Cliffhanger. Talk, cliffhanger. Had. I went on a rant about the chasm of distrust. Yeah. And uh, told everybody how to get over it. Yeah. And that they have to get over it. And it's, now we're going to dive more in the calls and why people won't call their their hot leads their and leads yeah well first let me say okay good bam let's go right into it bam right yeah. so <laughs> hot leads what's a hot lead anyway right yeah most fundraisers are used to the old way of doing things before greg warner got in here hey, <laughs> what's so what's that way you're like well, what is that way well they'll get a list mm -hmm. or they get a caseload assigned to them yes or they get a list and then they well screen it yeah, okay. but this list has no information about if they've been on your website recently. Or, or why they care. Yeah. Who they want to honor. What is the likelihood that they'll really give? Not, mm -hmm. not, not predictive analytics, but according to them. Yeah. Those are what we call verbatim. See? So, so, so surveys a create hot leads in my mind because if they fill out a survey, that's a good data point that they're engaged with your nonprofit enough to... Yeah, they're leaning in. Yeah, so that that's an indicator to me that they're a hot lead, whether they're ready to give or not. Yeah. That's another I mean, thing. We, well, we have in our dashboard, we have all kinds of ways to qualify. That's what we do. We're a qualification and prioritization and lead generation and cultivation company. Yeah. Okay, so we're not a identification company. So right. before us, the, you know, before we arrived, mm -hmm. the world was made up of lists, and then you'd do identification and well screening and some donor prospect research, yep. right? But that's all from like outside of the donor's head. Yeah. What we do is coming from the donor's face, <laughs> <laughs> coming out of their eyeballs and, and their, their fingers, their energy, their, their energy and their yeah. clicks. Yeah. Right. So there's all different levels of leads. You know, we got to really understand before we start talking about like why people won't call their leads. Let's just lay this down and say, well, there's all different kinds of leads. Like what, what kind of leads are you talking about? Are you talking about a referral from a mm -hmm. board member? That's a whole different thing yeah. than somebody who gave 500 bucks and has a likely predictive analytically modeled 
likelihood factor that they might give right yeah. according to the model mm -hmm. and then you have another lead which is they like you on facebook they just clicked on the donor advised fund button on your microsite mm -hmm. with with market smart yeah yeah <laughs> and uh they filled out the survey three days ago and they told you everything and they said that they would be very interested in giving real estate i'd say that's a hot lead you know it's the number one indicator of likelihood that somebody will actually talk to you and have a unbelievably robust conversation with you go ahead go ahead come on come on it starts with an r recency yes recency of engagement yeah, yeah. harvard <laughs> business review study yeah yeah came out you know how much, if you call someone. If you call within like five minutes of them yeah. on your site, they, they, they're going to talk to you. Or, you know, there's more to it, yeah. right? Well, within one hour of somebody like either filling out a form or doing something, engaging online mm -hmm. or whatever, then your likelihood of having a really good conversation, really solid conversation goes up by 7,000%. Because their mind space is already there. Yeah. They're not having to switch gears to talk to you right yeah they're already they're already interested so our customers i tell them look we're generating these highly qualified leads they're they're there they're, you know sometimes it's like whoa, it's like hundreds of them yeah thousands of them ah, i can't call them all <laughs> i'm like okay i told you i warned you i told you to prepare <laughs> This is market smart. You could look at the recency within the data to yeah. prioritize. So everybody for 25,000 years in fundraising, they've been looking at predictive models. And I'm not knocking to predictive models and yeah, all that stuff. But they were just throwing darts at a board hoping they'd pick the right one to call. As far as the, you don't have recency information, you just have some capacity information, yep. perhaps. Yeah, so you're out of the 100,000 people, sure, you zeroed in on 1,000 on really great ones, mm -hmm. but you don't have the recency factor, and that is the number one most powerful indicator. That's it, bro. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Don't tell me there's something better. There isn't. I haven't found it, and I've looked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unless they drive through your window <laughs> in their car. That's a likely indicator knocking that they'll talk the to you. Yeah. yeah, they're knocking on the front door. There, congratulations. But otherwise, if they are active and they watch, just watch the video of the little girl who needs a sandwich, mm -hmm. okay? She's crying. Call her. Yeah. And then the fundraisers say, oh, no, that, that, that seems like I'm, I'm rather, you know, too fast and i don't want to seem like i'm you know hounding on them and like a hawk and pouncing and i say no, no, no. that just shows your responsive well operating organization yeah and it shows customer service mm -hmm. caring and by the way turn that frown upside down you're not pouncing you're a facilitator of feel good emotions yeah so you have to change your attitude we talked about that in the last podcast if your attitude is wrong Sure, they're going to feel that you're pouncing. Mm -hmm. Hi, I, I'm calling because I just noticed that you clicked on that video. So I'm wondering, um, do you want to meet with me? That's, that's pouncing. But if you say, hi, Mrs. Johnson, this is Greg Warner. I'm calling from XYZ organization because I just got a notification that you downloaded our free little workbook that helps people, you know, create their autobiography for their children and their grandchildren so that they can really like leave their life story for their loved ones. And I thought that was just fantastic. Thank you so much for engaging with us. Mm -hmm. We really appreciate all of your donations over the past years. It looks like you've been giving for, gosh, 10 years. Thank you so much. So I just thought I'd reach out because I have another workbook and we actually have a recording of a webinar where we were we kind of taught people and helped walk them through that process of creating their autobiography. And it's a wonderful experience. A lot of people love it. So I, I thought I'd see if you might be interested in that. Yeah. Is that pouncing? Uh, that sounds way too friendly, the pounce. Yeah, that's <laughs> not a pounce. Yeah. That sounds like giving, mm -hmm. providing value, pinging people's emotions, treating them with respect, being filled with optimism and a positive attitude and also uh, showing that you're a facilitator who just wants to make them feel good and give them a valuable experience that enhances their relationship with your organization and its mission. Yeah, no, it's perfect. So it's all in how you look at it. If you think of yourself as a pouncer, uh, you're a pouncer. Yeah. If you're not creative and you're not l thinking about how can I give to this person and you just call and wing it, well, you're a pouncer. But if mm -hmm. you actually sit back for just a minute, look, you're a highly skilled surgeon 
if you're a major gift and legacy gift fundraiser. You get paid a pretty good sum of money. Yeah. You're not a twelve dollar an hour no. telemarketer. So take a minute, do your homework. Mm-hmm. You know, think about how you can provide value. Make an educated call. And make an educated call that's fair yeah. for them using the law of reciprocity. Okay. So why won't they call hot leads? Well, first of all, they a lot of people don't know how. And then they wing it. And then yeah. they get smashed. They, Like I say, they get punched in the face. And they're and scared they, to do it again. Yeah, I don't want to do that again. <laughs> well, why would you? Right. That hurt. Yeah. But they were nice to me. Well, because you suck. <laughs> yeah. You deserve to get punched in the face. That's how you learn. Well, not everybody. Some people. Some people. The ones who listen to this podcast. Yeah. Hey, I love you podcast people. Six <laughs> of you. No. More than six. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. That you, that's your badge of honor, the thousands of people. Yes. Thank you, Tim, for building this uh, audience for me, for us. For us, yes. All right. You want to go like make a list of all the reasons why people won't call leads? Yeah. Okay. What else would make people not want to call? Let me tell you something about sales, and then I'll tell you something about fundraising. Okay. So I'm going to go down a rabbit hole. Okay. This might have to be a 10-part <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Sounds okay. good. Because I could talk <laughs> I, about calling. So in sales, especially when I was selling to the private sector, mm-hmm. but you know when this business was was focused on helping private sector companies, and I was involved in generating leads. That's what we did. We generated highly qualified leads for sales teams yeah. of private sector companies. That's how we fell into this world of fundraising. I won't go through my whole story, but you know I, I helped a charity that I cared about. We generated major gift leads. This that next thing you know, I changed the whole company. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that only happened over 10 years, but it wasn't that short. It wasn't that long, really. But helping those sales teams, we used to say, like me and the CEOs of these companies, we'd be like, yeah, you know, a lot of these salespeople only last like six months. Mm -hmm. I mean, before I came in there and was generating leads, they had to kind of do their own thing, generate their own leads, set their own appointments, and it would be very high turnover. It would be like six months. And here's the reason why, is that it would be two months of this, two months of that, and two months of this, and then they're gone. So what are those two months? Well, the first two months, they're in, they're like training, they're learning, they're figuring out where the bathroom is, they're, you know, getting their desk ready. There's all kinds mm-hmm. of setup. Sure. You know, ah, yeah. we, gi- we give them a break. It's the first two months, right? Sure. They're looking at the data and they're getting the computer set up. And mm-hmm. well, I have to get the data is not organized right. And then so I, I have to do this. And the, my predecessor really screwed up. Yeah, and there this. was a blog post I read recently about. An app developer, there's this major feature that they just really are fearing to do. Cause they know it's just going to be a pain in the butt to do. So instead, they put in all these little nice touches to the app that really don't add any new value to the app that would give you more customers. But they, they felt productive and good because they added these new features, but they didn't add the thing that they really don't want to do, but they know will make their, their app that much better and their company more successful. Reminds you a lot of that of this noodling around and not getting what you actually need done done they do that yeah so then then that's only a certain period of time then Mm -hmm. they get the feeling they're like oh i I think i better go into another mode especially usually the ceo will sit them down and say okay look now it's been almost it's been four months so what's what's (laughs) going on here you know yeah when are you going to start showing me something and that's when they start usually looking for a job Right. <laughs> so then, <laughs> so then they go looking for another job, yeah. and then you know by two months later they still haven't gotten much done. So they they either get fired or they go and they take the other job. In this quick break, learn where to download Dr. Russell James's Visual Plan Giving Textbook absolutely for free. Many of you know about Dr. Russell James's research. I'm proud to share that he's just sent us over a new version of his Visual Plan Giving Textbook. The new version has tons of great information on the 2018 tax law and is available for free at imarketsmart.com slash 2018 tax law. That's www.imarketsmart.com slash 2018 tax law. Here are just some of the things you'll learn from the book. The secret to understanding planned giving, a super simple introduction to taxes, how the 2018 tax law will affect planned giving, how to document charitable gifts, Special techniques for donating retirement assets, private foundations, and donor-advised funds, and much more. Once again, download your copy for free by visiting imarketsmart.com slash 2018 tax law. Now, back to my conversation with Greg Warner. All right. So now in the fundraising sector, 
it's more like 18 months for poor performers. It's kind of like, okay, so the first six months, and as, yeah, things move a little slower. They must be like so, experts at finding jobs, though. That's got to uh, be quite well, the Well, I mean, first yeah. of all, they are experts, but also there is a high demand mm, yeah. for people with these skills. Yeah. Okay? Very high demand, and there's a lot of placement companies mm -hmm. th that's their job is to find them and move somebody around all right so but I, look i'm not trying to bet remember this is just a certain percentage of the market hopefully most fundraisers are really good professionals but i bet yeah. all of us have met people who kind of fit this profile they get in there for six months and everything's wrong everything's their predecessors screwed everything up everything yeah. has to be kind of like redone they're, they're like getting ready to get ready you know for six <laughs> months they have to do the database they have to do this they have to get their wealth screening done they they can't make their calls yet because mm -hmm. the table is not set yeah, you know they can't right. they can't do anything. So that lasts for about six months, and then then the next board meeting comes around. That's always an impetus to you know get something done. So now they got all the stuff, and the and the board will, or somebody will say, okay, so what's going on now? Well, okay, I got everything ready. <laughs> so but now we need to do some analysis, and we need to like you were calling it noodling. Yeah. So now we need to noodle the data, and we have a meeting with the the people who gave us the data. So that's in two weeks, and then we're gonna understand more about the data and then, and then I'll be able to plan and then I think what I'll do is I'll probably send some letters out so then I, I can't call until the letters go out because it's it's inappropriate for me to call someone I mean just out of the blue I mean you got to be professional these are wealthy people we, you know blah, blah blah so then we do all that and then another six months of that and then finally you know maybe start making some calls they do it poorly they get punched in the face oh, I don't want to make an ALOs you know and then they start finding some other project and all of a sudden they're involved in the, the event it's like well hold on I thought you're supposed to be meeting with major donors oh no no, no. I got sucked into helping out with these nap folding these napkins unbelievable i'd really rather be out with the major donors i can't believe i'm getting sucked into right yeah by the way you know, that's when they start looking for the job right yeah it's like uh oh no oh, they're on me yeah. yeah so unfortunately too many leaders of nonprofits don't really understand what's going on mm -hmm. they don't understand the the process the pipeline they don't understand lead generation cultivation but they're really great maybe perhaps of creating programs and developing programs and doing some operational stuff maybe financial if they've never really been a major gift officer and, and learned how to do it right they don't know the warning signs that someone's just screwing around I mean yeah look the first day someone gets on the job they can make a call yeah <laughs> and talk to a donor there's got to be one mm -hmm. even if it's a board member to get to know them yeah that's my long winding road about what you were calling noodling yeah and i guess the low performers in the private sector it takes about six months to be found out not here at market smart no <laughs> i mean i can find out five days we've had some people last i think it was the shortest time it was maybe three days yeah and i was like i was like dude are you kidding me <laughs> You promised all this stuff. All of a sudden, you walk through this threshold. You like went into another dimension. All of a sudden, you're a different person than the person I interviewed. What happened to that guy? <laughs> I like that guy. I want that guy. Right. Yeah. Well, where 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 do you go? Some salespeople, they're just really good at selling themselves. They're and, good at and, getting and, jobs, and that, that's that's what they're good at. Yeah. It's like congratulations, <laughs> but that product sucks. <laughs> yeah. You know? It's yeah. like an empty box. You open the box. Where is it? I lost it. It's like a pet rock. Yeah. <laughs> nothing nothing no paid for nothing so you you got to find that out fast yeah. you owe it to the donors who are paying that person's paycheck to figure out if they really know what they're doing mm -hmm. they're not a lot of hot air there's a lot of people with hot air they've read all the books they know how to regurgitate it and then they get in there are they really doing it? Do they really know how to do it? You got to stay on top of that. No analysis paralysis. No. No, I'm calling bull all that. I yeah. know. I know.
Yeah. Okay. So that doesn't happen yeah. here. No. So there's other reasons why people don't call besides noodling mm -hmm. and fear of rejection. If I remember right, yeah. those are the first those, two. Yeah. First two. Okay. Yeah. So people are hyper polite. I guess I hinted on this. People yeah. think, oh well, I, ca I can't. You call. have to wait for the letter. Yeah. I gotta. I gotta write a letter. Mm -hmm. I gotta write a letter. I'm having trouble getting the data out of the database. I gotta be super polite. The data's all messed up. I gotta clean up the data. I gotta write a letter. I gotta. I got to write lots of letters. I got to, you know, okay. Yeah. And, and the letter has to be perfect. And I need mm -hmm. my, I cannot call somebody unless they first introduction letter. That the hyper polite way to be. And calling is very disruptive towards their, their life. So I'm not going to interrupt them. That's They've got the a one. busy These schedule. Are wealthy people. I cannot interrupt them. No. They're not human. I mean, they have a particular hatred for interruptions because they're wealthy. See, wealthy people more sensitive to interruptions for some reason. Yeah, I think I buy that one. No, yeah. They're, yeah. They're, they're not. <laughs> I've seen them, you know, at the so country so club. Some are very chatty. Some wealthy people love to talk. To yeah. They're, they're very good people, people. You know what's the best way to get, uh, especially an entrepreneur, best, best way to get them to talk? Ask them about their business? Yeah. Yeah. Ask them how they, how the, how they started it and how they created it. Send mm -hmm. them back in time. Yeah. Relive the glory days. Yeah. The, the hunt. Oh, my God. I have to stop myself because <laughs> when a good salesperson like gets me on the line and they ask yeah. me that, I'm like, oh, this is fantastic. <laughs> I get to tell my story. Right. I get to write my autobiography. I, I start to lean back. I put my feet <laughs> up on my table and then I'm, I'm like, hold on. Who is this? Hold on. I got to <laughs> stop myself. I'm like, you're good. Yeah. You're good. You almost had me there. Yeah, almost had me there. But <laughs> it's not a trick. No, it's not. It's nice. Yeah. It's nice. Look, they're trying to help my business. They want to ask about yeah. it. Oh, okay. I appreciate that. That gives you a nice foundation to build like a relationship out of. Yeah. But my problem is I don't have a lot of time. Right. So then all of a sudden, 30 minutes goes by. There's seven people outside my door, and I see you all <laughs> knocking on the window, and you guys make these little signs, and you're like, Greg, you're late for this, or you screwed up that, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. So I, I can't do And you see me leaning back. It's because mm -hmm. some yeah. joker got me. Yep. Yeah. He's not a <laughs> joker. He's smart. All right. So hyper politeness, you, you can't be that polite. You've got to lean in. If you're that polite you probably are not really meant for this gig. Yeah. You know, look. Can't be worried about mistakes. You, can, you know, you can make a mistake every now and then, and sometimes damn. that'll be a laughing point where you can disarm the, the person you're trying to work with. And you know what? If you have the right attitude and you're caring and giving and, and providing value and asking the right questions that are about them and very mm -hmm. specific and highly relevant and personalized, they're not going to get mad at you. Yeah. You're not going to make a mistake. But just do it. Yeah. I'll tell you what's impolite is the fact that you haven't called them. Yeah. They gave that money or they're thinking about giving money and you haven't called them because you, you think you need to be polite. That's not nice. They deserve a call. You're being impolite. You're being selfish. You're being afraid. The polite thing to do is to reach out to them, but do it well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And then there's the hyper professionalism. Mm, yeah. It's kind of like hyper politeness. Everything is completely perfect. Yeah. Uh, I need to make sure that my approach is, and, and, and we just talked about how yeah. everything needs to be relevant in this and that and the other thing. Yeah. But the hyper-professionalism is actually opposite of authenticity. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you can't sound rehearsed and like, like you're uber professional. People want to yeah. deal with real people, mm -hmm. not professional butlers and machines. Yeah. So I guess the... Is it like calling their secretary or to make sure that you can schedule an appointment with them? This is Greg Warner. I'm calling because I, I would like to set an appointment with Mrs. Watson, please. So, you know, so professional. Right. Come on. Yeah. This is 2018. Yeah. <laughs> just be, yeah, just be a person. Be genuine. Yeah. yeah. You got CEOs that all wear hoodies and t-shirts and sneakers now. Yeah. You know, Blue even, jeans, even old yeah. ones like me. <laughs> right? Look, sure. I got a hole in my jeans. Yeah. I'm wearing my running shoes. Right? And I got yeah. my hoodie. There you go. There. I'm the prototypical. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I, I mean, sometimes I wear a suit, but I don't, true. I don't like to. Yeah. It's not this day and age. No. So just, I guess the answer for the hyper-professionalism is be authentic. Mm -hmm. yeah. Be authentic. Be real. 
then you get the the self conscious. So here's another reason, right? Yeah. I, I don't want them to think this, or I don't want them to think that, or this is a very important person. I'm mm-hmm. I, I need to really be self conscious about this. I mean, they're very famous, yeah. they're very wealthy, and they don't go to the bathroom. They <laughs> they don't brush their teeth. I mean, they're god like creatures. <laughs> They just shut down with fear. And I can't believe that I, I can't believe I would be allowed to talk to them. I'm just a mere mortal. So they're very self conscious yeah. about that. And that prevents them from calling. It's like, yeah. well, again, if that's the way you feel, either you got to get over that or you got to get out of this job. Right. You know, you're in the wrong what, role. That's what you're doing. You're talking to wealthy people. That's your job. They're, they're just people. They're just people. Yeah. With different goals in mind. Or they inherited it. Or they inherited it. That's another <laughs> possibility. A lot of wealthy people just inherited it. I hate to say it, but, you know, what I have found, yeah. uh, there's probably research on this, but the ones who inherited it... Don't keep it? Uh, well, uh, they don't give it as much. Yeah, that's, yeah. Finishing my sentence. Sorry, I... D- you said last year... Yeah, it's true. You were going to... Last year, you said you were not going to finish my sentences. All right. Fail. It's okay. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's yes, okay. they, they do okay. not get... It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> um... What was I talking about? See you. That's why you can't. Just, what were we talking about? <laughs> yeah, Self-consciousness. Inher- inherited wealth. Why are those people different wealth. from the people that earned it themselves? Yeah. I mean, I think entrepreneurs, I think that they probably, and according to Dr. James, they are a very good target, if you will. I hate to call people targets, but yeah. you know, because they want to give back and, and because they really did it. They grinded it out. You know, and I, I guess if if you inherited it, if you were taught right by your mm-hmm. parents, yeah, you know, I mean, Warren Buffett's son actually wrote a whole book on this because he's pretty much the guy doling out all the money. Yeah, I forget what the title of the book is, but he wrote a book on you know, but he found himself in that. He's like, you know what, this is my role. This is how I'm finding meaning in life. So that's cool. Yeah, but not everybody's like him. Other ones are just like, yeah, my parents love me. I just want to spend it. I don't want to deal with this. Right. You know. So so um, anyway, yeah, be authentic. Mm-hmm. I think most people who are really trying to make a meaningful impact in the world are going to ap- appreciate that. Yeah. So let's see. That's all I got for like yeah. why people won't call right. leads. Fear is like what it comes down to most of the time. Yeah, fear. Uh, but fear is because they didn't put their head on right. Yeah. If you screw your head on right and you have that, uh, I hate to sound repetitive, but mm-hmm. you have a giving attitude. Yeah. You have an attitude that you're there for them. You show them that you know them. You do your research. You figure out what value you can provide that would be highly relevant, highly personalized, and make them feel good in capital letters make them feel good and yeah. you know how to get over the chasm of trust you need to do that for them and for you you get over the chasm of trust quickly so that you can provide value and begin the question and answer process where you learn about them so that you can be a matchmaker and facilitate their giving so they can find what they really want and so that they can develop and create the best version of themselves for them, for their family, for humanity, and for future generations, for eternity. Wow, that was a speech. That was a speech. Drop the mic. Drop the mic. Goodbye. Bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of Engagement Fundraising. If you like the show, make sure to review it on iTunes and pass along to a colleague. If you're curious about what we do, make sure to check out imarketsmart.com And make sure to check out the Visual Plan Giving Textbook updated for the 2018 tax law found at imarketsmart.com slash 2018 tax law. Thanks again for listening to Engagement Fundraising.